Hi guys! Uh, today I'm just going to give you, as usual, the little update. I don't have different symptoms than the usual one that I had before. So part of me tells me that it's too early and the other side of me tells me, well, it's the trigger shot because the trigger shot stays in your system for like 10 to 15 days after the IUI. So it can give you a false positive. And I don't want to test anything until uh, day 12 after to make sure that if it's a false or a negative, I'm going to be okay with that because no wing it can be the trigger shot. I'm still stressed. I, like I thought I could do good during the two week wait. Was I wrong? I can't do good. I stress over every little thing. It's not that I go on Google because I'm good. I'm not going on Google. Every time I try to go on the computer and write TTC something, I just stop and be like, no, no, I'm not going to do this because every time it's confusing me and it gives me ideas and the hopes and the confusion are too much for me. So I'm good with that. But for the rest, I don't know. I'm so nervous and anxious to know the answer uh, that I feel like I'm always on nerve. Like my nerves all like over the place and I feel like I'm always like stressed about something. Not worried, just a good stress, a good feeling, but annoying feeling too. So anyway, so, uh, see, I'm nervous and it shows because I can't wait to know the answer. Look, there's a part of you that's so scared to know. But the other side of you is like, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. Because if it's positive, then it's the best news you ever got. But if it's negative, then that's the worst news you you get, you know. So it's half, half. Like, and it's always a battle inside you of, well, I'm happy. I'm not. I'm worried. And I want this to work this time. And you're like, it's always a battle inside. And... The two week wait is taking forever. It's only been five days and I feel like it's been a few years. See? So I try to keep myself focused on something else. Like I have a few little projects that I want to finish, like I told you before. And this weekend I have my nephews over. So there's a few projects that I I want to try with them with recycled items that I had. And uh, we're going to have, they're young, so it's like little projects like butterflies, uh, dinosaurs, cars uh, with recycled items. And so that's going to keep me busy. I'm going to have, you know, it's going to make me feel as if I'm constructing something with my anxiety instead of just letting it eat me up. So, yeah, that's it for the symptoms. Uh... I'm lucky because I write it down in the journal and every time I'm worried that it's a new symptom or anything else, I'm just going to go back to the journal and read the symptoms that I have before and the other ones and make sure that, okay, that's the usual. No need to worry about that. No need to get your hopes up. No Because I don't want to tell myself, oh, that, that's it. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant because I feel like it's worse when you have a negative. So my boyfriend uh, is actually stress with other stuff in the house because we had the water system break down uh so we have someone over to repair that and it's going to cost us a lot, a lot of money so i need to make sure that i walk on eggshells to make sure that i'm not going to add to his mood swings that he has right now uh, because you know i'm already anxious so I don't want to add on to him so I'm trying to put like all the anxiety that I have I'm trying to either talk to some friends that I know I can trust uh, with that uh, struggle that I have and not let my boyfriend know about all the anxiety that I have because he has so much on his plate right now and there's something else that broke it's not just little things you know because when you have a house like the, the the things that break it's always just the ones that are super expensive it's not just like my tv broke down well tvs can be expensive yeah or computer yeah it's not just like something little that broke down like it something it's a lot of money that we could have 
save for IVF, but then. But anyways, I'm not gonna worry about that because I worry so much these days. So I'm gonna keep myself busy this weekend with my nephews. I have a, a kid's birthday party too, so that's gonna be pretty full. My friend from Toronto is here, and you know that that worries me a bit because every time she's here, I adore her. But you know, every time she's here. AF shows up and it's not it's not because of her I know it's not but you know sometimes you you, you feel as if like oh come on so so that means AF is gonna show it's a fail cycle like you know your brain is playing games on you and and I don't want to go into that game of ruining my brain and my anxiety going up I just want to make sure that I'm happy to see her and she's not she's not related to when AF shows up, it's just happened that whenever she's here, AF is there and she's going to be here for two weeks. So if AF shows up, she's going to be here. But I'm happy because every time that AF showed up and she was here, well, it felt good because I saw her and it kind of helped me go through AF a little bit easier because she's a good, good friend of mine. and and. She prays that we have kids, and she she knows it so well, and she she knows that even though I act strong, it doesn't mean deep down I'm not broken. So even though there's a part of me that's like, oh my gosh, it's a failed cycle again because she's here, there's a side of me, well, you know, I need her whenever my cycle is failed, so I need her. So it's a good and bad thing, you know. And I don't want to get into the things about oh my gosh that means that the signs and all because you know when you want to see something and you focus on on something so much you see signs pretty much everywhere and I don't want to read too much into all the things that I see and I hear and what all but anyways I'm just so like all all over the place I'm trying to calm myself down how do we do that how do you calm yourself in the two week wait how do you do it I tried and I tried and I tell myself I'm gonna do good this time. I'm gonna do good, but every time I fail, like I suck. I go on Google. I didn't do that, but you know, all the rest. I'm nervous and I'm going all over the place and I'm having those dreams about uh, uh, how the nursery will look like with babies and and them and uh, and how it's gonna feel good to have like little kids running around the house, you know. I don't know, like, my head is blowing up. Wish me luck, because I don't think I'm going to make it. It's the longest two-week wait ever, because this is closing a chapter. This is closing the IUI's journey. We're going on to another option and something different, something I'm scared of. Well, I'm not scared of. Not anymore because I read into it and I know there's different options that are more, less invasive. Oh, I'm just like, you know, when you wish you didn't have to go through those and you wish it'd be more easy, that's where I'm at, you know? So closing that chapter, I mean, it feels like it's so much more on the stress level of like, this is it. If it happens, then we're done. But if it's not, then it's something new, different, and... I get insecure, like everyone else. Baby, that's to you, and I wish you the best of luck. A miracle baby. I'm not gonna tell you this year, because every time I tell myself it's gonna be this year, it's, it's, never, it's never that year. So I'm not gonna tell you this year. But I wish you the miracle baby that you deserve, all of you. Because we're sisters in this. Best of luck, baby duck.